Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuruhi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamu dillala wa man yu'lil falahaliya la. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد فإن خير كلام كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى خير هدى أبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. After praising Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as the Wajil, the Mighty, the Sublime, praising Him, acknowledging that the assistance should be sought from him subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> and that we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek refuge in him from the evil within ourselves and from the bad consequences of all of our evil deeds whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he guides to the straight path then none will lead him astray except <coughs> by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whosoever Allah leaves to be astray then none will guide him after Allah has left him astray except by the will of Allah and I bear witness that there is no deity there is no God, no creator that has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa Abu Qasim al-Sadiq al-Masduq the one, his name was the father of Qasim the truthful and the one who spoke the truth and I bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent him as the last prophet and messenger to seal of them as to what follows verily <clears throat> the best speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance to be followed <clears throat> is the guidance of Muhammad and the worst of affairs in this religion from amongst them are the newly invented matters for every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation is astray and every astray will lead to the fire today inshallah wa ta'ala We want to talk about one of the most important things for the person in his life and one of the most important times that the person will have to focus on this important thing in his life. And that is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering Allah, the mighty, the sublime, in the life of the Muslim, and in particularly in the blessed month, which is fastly approaching the month of Ramadan. The reason we want to talk about the dhikr of Allah the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the month of Ramadan itself is a month full of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but however how many of the Muslims misunderstand this concept how many of the Muslims <clears throat> moreover don't take advantage of this issue of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rather, how many of the Muslims neglect this which is the obligation 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with. And inshallah ta'ala will take a look at the issue of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst the verses in his noble book he has mentioned in Surah Adhariyat Surah Adhariyat <coughs> the 51st Surah he has mentioned وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نَعَمْ Remind them <clears throat> because indeed the reminder benefits the believer. Remind them because indeed the reminder benefits the believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in his noble book in many places the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here Allah Azza wa Jal, the mighty, the sublime, and Alim al-Khabir, the one who's all-knowing and all-aware of everything. He has mentioned, remind them, because the reminder benefits the believer. And we see in opposition to that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned for the disbelievers, such as in Surah Al-Luqman, where he says, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا آيَاتُنَا And when our verses is mentioned, when our verses are recited, or our verses, meaning his verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says our, he's talking about him himself. And when our verses, our signs, which is part of what we're talking about today, the remembrance of Allah, as this is one of the names of the Quran, a dhikr. When our verses are mentioned to them, <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe those who don't benefit from the dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they those who don't believe, they turn away. They turn away. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they put their fingers in their ears, as if يعني, they have stuffed something يعني, in their ears. This is the example of how they don't benefit from the dhikr don't benefit from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. tutla alayhim ayatuna walla They turn away. Mustakbiran In an arrogant way. And here arrogance means turning away from the truth, rejecting the truth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ka'annahum ka'anna fi udunayhim waqara As if they have something stopped in their ears. Imagine a deaf mute, a person talking to them, they might at some point, if they see the lips moving, if they look up and see the person standing there, they may try to figure out, is he talking to me? What is he saying? But if they're not paying attention, they'll walk right past as if you know, they don't hear as this is the case of the person who was deaf. Here on Tabaraku wa ta'ala, struck the similitude of those who, when the verse, the dhikr of Allah, is read to them, they turn away. They turn away in a rejecting fashion, in an arrogant way, as if they had yani, something stuffed into their ears, as if their fingers clogged their ears. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَبَشِّرْ هُمْ بِعَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ and give them, thus, the glad tidings of a <clears throat> painful chastisement, meaning in the hellfire. And this is from the opposite of those who Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind them, because the reminder benefits the believer. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, Ya ayyuhil ladheena aman dhikru, Ya ayyuhil ladheena amanu, Ithkru Allah dhikran kathira. O you who believe, I command you. O you who believe. Here's the clause again, the believer. Tabarakul wa ta'ala already, Allah Azza wa Jal already addressed the issue of belief first. Here Allah is saying belief again. O you who believe, I command you to remember Allah with much remembrance. I command you to remember Allah with much remembrance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ahzab, the verse of the Ahzab, <clears throat> they call this uh, the Confederates, 33rd Surah of the Quran, after Surah Al-Sajda, which is 32. <clears throat> Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned a group of individuals, different descriptions, of those people that will, in the end, Allah said, He promises for them, Makfiratan wa ajrun azima, forgiveness and a great reward. Forgiveness, forgiving them for their sins, where they were facing some type of punishment, although they believed, some type of punishment because of the sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, a magnificent, a great reward, which the great reward here is al-Jannah, entering the paradise. Maqfiratun na'am wa ajran azima. Forgiveness, as no one will enter the Jannah except he is forgiven. Can't go to Jannah with sins. So either Allah forgives you or, well, ayyadha billah, the person has sins that will be punished. He or she will have to do the punishment for a time in the fire and they will come out. Or the person will have minor sins that different actions in the religion wiped away those minor sins and he will go or she will go to the Jannah by the permission of Allah Tabarakul wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he mentioned different categories and different descriptions of people, such as the one who fast, male and female, the truthful one, male and female, the one who was obedient, male and female, the one who um, had um, khashya, he feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inside and outside she or or him that individual had this inner fear that will prevent them from doing sins out of being shy and humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fasting man and the fasting woman all the way down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa dhakirin wa dhakirat and that one who remembers Allah from the male and the one that remembers Allah from the female. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing by putting the woman, the man and the woman that remembers Allah, yani, in the group of the other people, such as those that have been mentioned, that Allah will forgive them for their sins and admit them into a a magnificent reward, meaning the Jannah showing the status of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not something that we should understand is merely a statement on the tongue or something of a Christian perception. Rather, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something tremendous. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the Quran in light of this issue and word called a dhikr where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna anzalna ilayka dhikr verily indeed we have sent to you O Muhammad the dhikr 
Naam, and indeed it is upon us. And here, every time Allah says us or we, He's talking about solely Himself. This is a way of speaking with a high level of respect, dignity, and sharaf, nobility that Allah uses we and us to talk about Himself. Verily, indeed. Allah said he will preserve that Quran. Naam. And he preserved it upon the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said, we have sent to you the dhikr ayy al-Quran. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Quran is dhikr because dhikr also is indicative of Something being repeated, something being said over and over again. And many times you find verses similar, you find the same word mentioned maybe 50 times, sometimes 200 times, different amounts of times words are mentioned, repeated in the same or different way in the Quran. All of this is why Allah Azza wa Jal called it and mentioned it as dhikr. This dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is connected to not only the heart of the Muslim, the true believer, but it is something that يَتْعَلَّكُوا لِبَتْنِهِ جَمِعًا that it is connected to the whole body of that individual. Not just this يعني, heart, but it's connected to the issue of his tongue and the rest of the body limbs. And for this reason, some of the ulama of al-Islam of the past and the present, they have mentioned that the dhikr, the remembrance, the mentioning, and this is how we should understand, the remembrance, the mentioning, and the contemplating on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As all of this is in one concept of dhikr. To remember Allah in your mind, on your tongue, in your heart, yani, and as well yani, with your eyes, with your ears, with your limbs. Now, when you look at something, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at the trees, when you look at the sky, it shouldn't just be a mere look and glance. Oh, it's cloudy. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Oh, that's a nice tree. You should remember the creator of that beautiful sky, the creator of that sky that looks cloudy, the one who created that magnificent creation, the trees, the mountains, wherever your eyes lay. Likewise, it should make you and increase you in Iman. When you look at those objects, those things that Allah has created, and you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should also make this khashya, this fear inside of the person that is going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She's going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of this dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the scholars, they have mentioned that this dhikr is a'adham. This is a, a great, magnificent thing. The dhikr itself is a'adham min al-ibadat. It is from the most greatest types of pleasing actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we call worship. And many times we have said the word al-ibadah is broader than the word that we use in English, worship. As the issue of ibadah is connected to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is pleased with, was worship. You have false worship. 
You have man-made worship. You have worship that is silly. You have worship that, yani, Allah musta'an, suits one person, doesn't suit another person. But the ibadah and the deen of Allah wa ta'ala could never be silly. The ibadah that Allah has prescribed, it suits everyone. There is something for each individual to do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which he has yani, ma'adha, <clears throat> put upon his servant, is that which is never to be in falsehood. So here the scholars have explained yeah, and the dhikr is a thing that is azim and it is from the most greatest types of worship. They also mention as it relates to remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa khafifun ala lisani it is something light on the tongue it doesn't require a lot wallahi to say the statement subhanallah or to say alhamdulillah or to say la ilaha illallah or to say Allahu akbar to say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah it doesn't require a lot it's easy for a person to um, as we say puppet or parrot to learn and to say these simple statements. While on the scale, they are adima and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa in the malaika and with the angels. Wa in the anbiya wal mursaleen. With all of the prophets and messengers. And with the true believer. These statements Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed and left for us as dhikr or light on the tongue and this is from the blessing and the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the gift wa hikmatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala alayna ba'da rahmatihi azza wa jal these are from the great gifts the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us out of his wisdom after his mercy that he gives us something so light that is so tremendous in merit that is so tremendous in the effect that it has upon the human being so much so the scholars of Islam from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah those who hold to the Sunnah of the Messenger those that cling to the guidance of the Sahaba the Tabi'een, those who keep Islam the way that it was completed on the last day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al -yawm lakum This day I've completed your deen for you. Those scholars of Islam, the scholars of the deen of Allah wa ta'ala, they have also mentioned the great effect that it has on the human being. The great effect that it has on the human being. So much so that they say that the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the servant, for his bondman, is something that is more needed for the human being it's more needed for him than the food that the body requires. Why? Because this is the issue of preserving the heart. And the dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this dhikr ala tatama'inna quluba yani yani quluba Now and does not this dhikr give solace and tranquility to the heart? Now, does it not give tranquility to the hearts? 
Now, the Quran, of course it does. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the Quran, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shifa lima fi sudur, it is a cure for that which is in the heart. Be it ham huzn, anxiety or depression. Be it that which is stinginess and greed. Be it yani, that which is laziness and incapability. As the Prophet used to make dua against those things, be it disobedience, addictions to wrong things, vices, be it fear, unnatural fear, anything that is a defect spiritually or physically of the heart. Al-Tabarak wa ta'ala mentioned that this dhikr, this Quran is a cure for that which is in the hearts. وَهَكَذَا بَابَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ ذَكْرَ الْعُلَمَاء The ulama, they also likewise, they mention the reason that the dhikr, we are in greater need of the dhikr for our hearts and for our bodies than people are in need for food because the issue of the dhikr being connected to the tongue, the body parts, and the heart is an issue that will disallow, disallow disobedience to Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala, minimize that which is ma'asi. And the ma'asi, the disobedience, the sin to Allah Azza wa Jal, the sin against his commandments, or the harm that the person causes themselves with disobedience, is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned many times in many ways in his book that this is the demise and the destruction for many nations. Therefore, a person cannot go a single Blink of an eye without remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if she or he wants to be spared from punishment. If he or she wants to be kept upon guidance, then they cannot be left without dhikr for a single moment. Amma at ta'am wa sharab. As far as food and drink, and we know many people have been stranded. They didn't have food for a certain amount of days. They drank a little water. They ate some ice. Miraculously, they survived. But however, the survival of a pure heart, a guided heart, a heart that has the light that will shine and show a person the right way, even in the darkest situation or the darkest corner of the earth, is key to this dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's key to the remembrance, the constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue. Consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal in the heart, contemplating the names and the great powers and blessings and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being that which will affect the lambs and that which would make the believer rejuvenated in his or her iman make them from amongst those that the Prophet sallallahu mentioned as it relates to the difference between life and death the one who's alive versus the one who has <coughs> deceased as the hadith in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, where the Prophet Sallallahu gave us an example concerning this dhikr when he said, مَثْلَ الَّذِينَ 
يذكرون ربه رب مثل الذين يذكرون مثل الذين يذكرون ربه ومثل الذين لم يذكر ربه مثل الحي والميت أو كما قال. He said the example, the one who remembers his Lord versus the one who doesn't remember his Lord is like the one who is alive versus the one who is dead. The one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this one, the prophet has described him like the one who's alive. As the life of the heart is a serious life. Just as the death of the heart is a serious death. If a person's heart is alive with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the spiritual life of guidance and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they shall find najat insha'Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. They shall find safety even in times of tribulation. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will be with them. Kama ja'a fi hadithan. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Tirmadhi wa ghayri, Allah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ihfadallah, Ihfadallah, Ihfadaka. Remember Allah. Here the word hif means to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hif, to preserve. Here the sallam said, Ihfadallah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your yani, heart, on your tongue, in your mind. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep you yani, with him. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't leave you even in hard times. He will be there to guide you, to answer your dua, to make you from amongst those who will be triumphant in any situation. So here the Prophet is talking about the one who remembers his Lord is like the one who's alive. And the one who doesn't remember his Lord is like the one who has died. And there's another word in where he mentions and there's another wording or with the similar meaning <coughs> and Allah knows best to the actual wording and I'm going to paraphrase and give the meaning <coughs> there's another wording and all of these hadith are authentic where the prophet talked about the example of the house that has the remembrance of his Lord in it versus the house that doesn't have the remembrance of his Lord in it as like the example, and he said the same thing of the one who's alive versus the one who is dead. Or come a call, or as the prophet actually said, word for word. And this, in a nutshell, Allah it shows and the praises to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala how negligent we are as a people, as the ummah, as those bond bondments of Allah that he has given us the command to be in the state of dhikr, to be with the dhikr, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this fashion. Because subhanAllah, if this is the case, the status of the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in that which we heard from the verses of Allah. That is, it benefits the believer. That is, it is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected with all of the things that leads to the Jannah, the forgiveness of Allah and the Jannah. That is, it is from the things that cures the sicknesses, the trials and troubles of the heart. It is from the things that gives tranquility and ease to the believer. It is the thing that if it is held then it is like the one who was alive. It is a thing. If it is abandoned, then it is like the one who has died. Then we ask ourselves, what is wrong with the ummah today? That we are very, very low. In a very low state. 
debased globally, even amongst ourselves, fighting, debating, arguing, disobeying Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala, doing all types of actions that Wallahu alam, maybe we'll find even some from amongst the non-Muslims not indulging in. SubhanAllah. Doing that which is only connected to the worldly life as if we have thrown the hereafter behind our back. And it reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is in a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started to talk about the statement where he said Nadr Allah Fi yani lafad nadr Allah amran samia maqalati fawa'aha kama samia'ha wa balaga wa balaga wa wa hafadahu wa balagahu wa lafad sallam ila akhir hadith he said may Allah make the face enlightening full of a special glow and make it beautiful. The one who hears my statement, then he understands it, he memorizes it, and he passes it on. Then in that hadith, the Prophet wasallam, in one wording, he mentioned there are three things. Talatha la yigul Talatha la yigal alayhinna qalb musliman There are three things that if they are held to the heart of the Muslim would never be tainted. The heart of the Muslim would never be filled with um, an insignificant attitude or a um, type of As we say, non-religious or an insincere attitude towards the religion. You know, three things, if the Muslim holds to it, he will preserve his deen. His deen will become light or something small in his eyes. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned three things. Then, the narrator of the hadith, he mentioned... Man hamma al akira, man hamma, man hamma, man hamma, man hamma, man, man can ham, man can hammahu al akira, man can hammahu al akira, whoever makes his intention the hereafter. Jam Allahu shamlahu, wa ja'ala ghinahu fi qalbihi. And Allah will gather all of his affairs. If he makes the hereafter his thing in front of him, he makes the hereafter the thing that is his sole issue, then Allah will gather all of the things in his life. Gather all of his affairs for him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that satisfaction, that wealth, that richness, that which the individual seek, he will make all of that in his heart a contentment. He will make that which makes the servant content, makes him feel rich, make him not feel in need of anything, that his reliance is upon Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala, as long as he or she has the intention and they have as a real affair in front of them, striving for the hereafter, then Allah will gather all of their life, all of their affairs, put it together in a way that that person's life will be in good shape. And Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala will make in their heart a satisfaction and make the richness in their heart. Or atatuhu dunya, and then after that, after making that person content, Allah would still give them the dunya, things of this life. While that person was fleeing from the dunya, and what's meant here? That 
A person doesn't need anything of the worldly life. He or she lives in the sticks and the woods. They don't have a need for any type of clothing, food, or necessities. No. The necessities you have to have. This is part of you being on earth. But what's meant here is those things that won't aid and help a person towards the hereafter. A person is fleeing from those things. He or she is not trying to pile up everything they can get their hands on or take more than what they need for fear that that extra might take them astray. That extra might take them from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to being guf to being in severe ghafla that that person will be 100% negligent of the remembrance of Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala and then the prophet sallam he went on and he mentioned aman niyatu wa man niyata wa man wa man kana niyatuhu dunya and whoever his intention is for this life he makes everything about this life Allahu alayhi dayatuhu. Then Allah will make a departure, make separation between him and that very dunya, worldly life that all that person seeks is that worldly life. And Allah will make everything that he strives for a loss for him. And then Allah Tabaruk wa ta'ala's Prophet said, Waja'ala. And he will make that poverty that he fears so bad that everything is about dunya, put it between his eyes. And in the end, he will not achieve, he will not gain, he will not be able to have anything from that worldly life that he's chasing, 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 except what Allah has already wrote for him to get. Anyway, why do we mention this hadith in, in the winding down of our session? Because when you talk about the remembrance of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala in the life of the believer, and when you talk about the emphasis of this remembrance of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala, remembering Allah, saying His names, remembering Allah, saying His attributes, his actions, remembering Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala on the tongue and remembering him in the heart, remembering Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala, saying his names, yani often, when you talk about the remembrance of Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala, you shmel dhikra, yani asma'i wa sifati, it includes saying his names, thinking about his names, saying his Attributes, his actions, descriptions, thinking about them. It also includes the reading, the recitation of his book. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you talk about this issue as it relates to the life of the believer and his or her journey through this life back home to Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala, then we must understand. That Ramadan in this month, it is overly emphasized. Overly emphasized the remembrance of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala. The staying away from vain talk. The staying away from too much laughing. The staying away from bad speech. The staying away from that which would take you away from remembering Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala. The making of the salat which is the obligation upon the Muslim five times a day. Then on top of that extra, as we stand in Salat al and the reading of the Quran, all of this shows the importance of the dhikr in the life of the Muslim. And it shows that tawfiq from Allah, ta'ala, the success from Allah, that people may not do that all year, but in Ramadan, Allah blesses them with the different reasons that Muslims are stronger in Ramadan. With the different blessings from Allah that will allow a weak person to do things that strong people do. The emphasis is on the remembrance of Allah.
The remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala cannot be achieved with kathrat al a lot of laughing. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ, he used to laugh. But it's not reported that he used to laugh often. Some of us, we laugh every time we turn around. There's a joke. There's a humor. Life is full of fun. Why should I be miserable and sad? No, this has nothing to do with laughing a lot. Because a lot of laughter. And let us not mis mix up the issue of dahak with basam. The basam, smiling, is one thing. The hawk, yani, you should salt and has the voice when you laugh. Smiling is simply, yani, having a smile without a sound where people see pleasantness and they see brightness and they see, you know, your teeth and they see a good demeanor. Where laughing is the actual thing that is tied to the heart. That's what the Prophet says, love. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, كَثْرَةُ الضَّحَاقُ يَعْنِ مَا ذَانْ تُمِيدُ أَوْ يَمِيدُ قَلْبُ He said, a lot of laughing, frequent laughing, too much laughing, تُمِيدُ الْقَلْبُ It kills the heart. وَكَذَلَكَ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ كَثْرَةُ الْكَلَامُ نَعَمْ كَثْرَةُ الْكَلَامُ يَمِيتُ الْقَلْبِ نَعَمْ يَمِيتُ الْقَلْبِ Too much talking. Whether it be in the name of religion, whether it be in the name of, the, we're talking about the deen, whether it be in the name of, I'm giving da'wah, la. Sa'a li sa'a. There's a time for this and a time for that. When you give your da'wah, you talk about affairs of the deen, shouldn't be any... You're just talking on and on and on for hours at a time. And sometimes it may require that, dealing on the, depending on the nature of the thing, the severity of the situation, um, who's involved. But some people, all they do is talk, backbite and slander. And they say, we're talking about the deen, misquoting stuff, taking it out of context. Where they said, Allah said, and it's the prophet said. Or they say, it's in the hadith, but this is in the ayah. Or they're saying stuff that they heard and they didn't go verify. And all of this is okay because we're talking about the deen. This is the religion. La. Kathotu kalam, yimitul qalb. Too much talking kills the heart. And that's because the more you talk, the more you're going to say something that is not from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's by default because we're human. But if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you contemplate on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's just what you have. But when you use your words, and you're talking about subject matters, and issues, current affairs, and what reached you, and what you feel, and you're trying to give solution and advice, wallahi tallahi ballahi. Unless you're a person Allah blesses to be from those who remember Allah much, most of the kalam is going to be from yourself. Most of the statements, most of the talking is going to be bashriya, human statements from our own deficiencies. And for this reason, the Prophet wasallam mentioned too much talking kills the heart. What does it kill? It kills the dhikr of the heart. It kills the religious, spiritual light of the heart. Now, mahakada, as we said also, the issue of laughing takes the seriousness away. Nobody wants to remember Allah to Baraku wa ta'ala, think about the hellfire, think about the jannah. Nobody wants to pray more and, 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 and make more dhikr and read Quran. Nobody wants to guard his tongue or her eyes or yani, guard what they hear. If everything is hilarious, everything is humor, it takes the whole issue to an issue of sport and play. Now, Tabarakul wa ta'ala, he mentioned about this dunya la'ibun wa lahwan wa zinatuha na'am wa zinatun that this life is nothing more but sport and play fun and glitter hakadha and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has warned us about this. That we have not been commanded to waste our time. We have not been commanded to throw away the blessings of Allah. Ta'ala. We have not been commanded to be astray and to lead ourselves to destruction. Rather, rather, we have been commanded to hold on to the blessings of Allah. Ta'ala. Rather, we have been commanded to yani, do those things that lead to a wholesome heart. Rather, we have been commanded by Allah to go towards those things that are guidance. And from the guidance of Allah Taala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, Shah Ramadan Ladi Unzila fihi al Quran, Huda lin nasi wa bayina til min al huda wal furqan. Mentioned in the Quran with the issue of distinguishing between what's right and what's wrong and that which is a clarification for the people. And this is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should already have as a part of our daily life, that we should already have most of our time consumed with remembering Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala as the Prophet ﷺ used to remember Allah Azza wa Jal in the daytime, in the nighttime, when he was in leisure time, when he was reclining on his side, Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala knows that the Prophet ﷺ used to remember Allah in every circumstance, whether it was on his tongue and in his heart, whether it was contemplating. And this is from the ways of the believer, Adhakirin Allah Kathiro Adhakirat Nam, those that remember Allah much. They believe in man and women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for us a great reward, forgiveness, and an interest into the an entrance into the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is vastly approaching upon the backs of every Muslim that is alive, wishing and hoping to see a month full of that so that we can be involved, we can revolve our lives and rejuvenate our iman with the dhikr of Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala in hopes that we will have it outside of the blessed month of Ramadan. Nas'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yuhi qulubana bi dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts active and live pumping with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa nas'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yuktib lana and Naku min al-dhakirin wa dhakirat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write us down from those men and women that are able, practically, logically speaking, to be those male and female that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, often remembering Him a lot. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for the lack of remembrance of Him as it is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not punish us, rather to give us respite into the blessed month of Ramadan so that we may be stronger in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make us from those who die as Muslim to protect our deen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam wa sallam wa kathira wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Naam. Any questions around the topic first and then in general? Barakallahu <clears throat> feekun. May Allah bless you. Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa hu astaghfiruhu wa natubu ilayhi wa akhiru da'wana 
Anil Hamdulillah Rabbil Alami